Alright, uh, now that uh, I showed you how the uh, toggle switch is wired to the switch itself and it gave a, or a description and demonstration and example of uh, the, the input and the output and everything like that and I hope by now you've had a chance to look at the description that I, uh, that I posted a link to uh, in uh, the video here to uh, describe it a little bit better. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, especially coming from me, I'm not a big electronics guru. Uh, so I have a hard time explaining things. Um, but here is the uh, panel that we're using for the uh, program track. As you can see, it's uh, hooked up and uh, lit up because the uh, power cab's plugged into it. Uh, I have my toggle switch placed. Um, when I flip it up, it will be main. Everything will be running like on the main. And when I flick it down, that will be for programming. Uh, right now I got the, uh, as you can see, my smart booster is uh, up and operational. So everything is powered up right now. Uh, the toggle switch is in the off position. Pardon me for moving around, but we're going to visit underneath the layout. Uh, I wired everything uh, uh, under here with uh, these. You don't need to. You can run the di wires direct, but I got tired of soldering. Um, but let me move here quick. All right, this one here, this is my track power. Uh, coming from the bus line, the power comes in. Uh, this is just regular track power from my main layout from the, from the smart booster. And I have it separated. And these are all wires going to the toggle switch, to the input of the toggle switch for track wire that I showed you. This is output wires coming out of the switch which is back here pretty ugly looking um, but anyways the, the wires coming out of there that I showed you the ones going to the isolated section and the program track section uh, the one the two wires coming out going to the isolated section as you can see I have marked there go here and the program ones went there and then these are just feeder wires going up to one going up to the program side of it of the isolated uh, section and then the wires going to the isolated section itself feeder wire set going to the isolated section and effect, uh, set going to the program track so I mean you have to have them run the right way which look at that diagram that I that I told you to go look at that'll explain a little bit better and then uh, those were this is kind of input for the switch, this is output for the switch. And then here is the back of the panel. Uh, this is just a normal power cab panel. Of course you have your power source that came with the power cab. We have that plugged in. And then this is the uh, track output that you'll be using for uh, programming. And that is run into the toggle switch. The input toggle to, to the input side of the toggle switch for the programming track and then the output for it comes up here this is where it ties into the program now uh, so you didn't have to use these you could just run these wires directly to, like I could have soldered these wires together or just ran wires straight from the switch straight up to the track but I wanted to wire up the switch separately plus to show you how to I wouldn't been able to really show you if I ran it direct um, move around here a little bit further as you see I have my over here mounted behind the, the fascia is the USB uh, yeah the USB uh, interface for the power cab US, NCE USB interface sorry the NCE USB interface and that's the wire right here that you see coming around and plugging into the front of the panel there and then the, there's the USB output connection or input connection get back out here oh. now the next thing to do is hook the laptop up and see if everything works there's my USB cord um, I'm gonna set the camera on the tripod here and hopefully give you a demonstration 
before we connect everything up any further, uh, we will uh, test the uh, track power just to make sure everything is wired up right. So hold on a second. Okay, uh, to give you a quick demonstration, or to for me to verify that this is wired up right, because you don't want the power cab plugged into the programming section and your smart booster on at the same time if things are not wired up correctly, because you're going to probably blow up your smart booster. Um, but as long as everything's wired up okay, that shouldn't be a problem because of the isolated section that we have, and you can have both of them. Uh, powered up to, to the, at the same time. Now you can see there it says uh, 0, 0 0.1. I'm not really sure why, but as long as it says that, that means there's no no juice going through. Try to lay that somewhere where you can see it. I hope you can see that. All right. As you saw, the smart boosters powered up. The power cabs powered up on the program side of it. So, let's check, oh, the, and then the switch is in the center off position. So I should not have any power on either one of these tracks. Now right here's the insulated joiners. This here is the isolated section going to the layout. This is the program track section. So let's check. If you can see that, no power. Move on the other side of the uh, isolated set, or insulated joiner. No power. That's good because the switches in the off position there shouldn't be any. All right, let's uh, try just the let's try the program side. I'll switch it down to program. As you can see, the power cab is on, plugged into the PCP panel that it goes to the programming side of things. So you know that's powered up, and you saw my smart booster was powered up. So. Let's check that out. The isolated section should be dead. Alright, it is. Program side should have power to the uh, for the power cab. There we go. 13.8 is what it's saying. So we have power to the program side and not to the isolated section. That way we can do some, more, some programming and not disturb anything else in the layout. All right, now let's test this uh, as a as a main line or the layout use instead of a program track. We're going to use this as just uh, regular old layout running. Now, what you want to do is unplug your power cab now from that PCP panel because we do not want it interfering with the smart booster. Because the way we had that power cab plugged in, it was uh, being used as a power cab itself, and whenever you use it with the uh, smart booster, it essentially becomes a pro cab throttle not a power cab so we don't want any interference there and I'll explain that here at the end uh, what I'm talking about all right uh, now we'll flip this up to main so we should be just running we should just have regular track power power cab doesn't need to be plugged in at anywhere for that because uh, track power comes from the smart booster so let's check the isolated section check the isolated section all right, we got track power because it's not isolated at the moment because we have it switched to main use. There we go. Everything, it's all just part of the layout now. So, everything tested out good. So, nothing uh, shorted out or, or anything and uh, it's powered up just the way it should be powered. So, that's a positive thing. Next thing, uh, I'll uh, explain to you a little bit about what I meant about connecting the power cab and then uh, I'm going to hook the laptop up and see if we can get JMRI up and everything. Okay, now this just pertains to uh, power cab people. Now the reason uh, we use the certain cables we use for this, I, I did cover this in my uh, video on uh, USB or the SB5 Smart Booster, how to and why. Uh, but I will give a quick refresher here. Uh, you know these wires come with your power cab. You get the, the coiled wire and the, the straight flat one. Um, if you're just using your power cab with no booster, then you use this wire, the flat one, hung up there. It, and if you look in here, it actually has six wires. 
two of those wires actually carry uh, power to uh, the power cab itself and powers it on whenever you use it on your lab when you plug it into the panel. When you use a uh, booster, smart booster, that power and everything is handled through the smart booster now and not here. This essentially becomes just a throttle, uh, not a power cab itself, just a throttle, which is use this. And if you look in here, there's only four wires in there. That's because all we need to do is carry information back and forth with this to the track and not power. The power is dealt with the uh, smart booster. So, so right now, I mean, if you unplug this with a smart booster, you still have track power and whatever is happening on the layout will continue to happen. Um, so, uh, when I'm using this now as just a regular throttle for the layout, just running normal operations, I will have to use this. And I will use it in my UTP panels that I have placed around. Right there's one. Now when I decide to uh, do programming, I will use this cable here because essentially I'm separated from the smart booster because we are separating the program track from the main track which is powered by the smart booster so we need to have a way to apply programming track power to the program section which is why I mounted the PCP panel there that originally came with the power cab now I can reuse that so we have to use this so we actually have power to the uh, power cab and and to the track. So, whenever you switch the switch to the uh, main line running, or the you just want the program track to be part of the layout, um, definitely unplug this from your panel there. If not, then you're running this track power directly with the track power from the smart booster. And I'm pretty sure that probably won't go over well. I don't know exactly what might happen, but I don't want to know what, what might happen. So uh, before you switch to programming, or switch the switch to back to mainline running, uh, definitely unplug this from your PCP panel uh, that you use for programming. That way there's no uh, direct uh, conflict between the two. And then you can go back to your coiled wire and plug it into a UTP panel for your normal operations. I hope that makes sense. Alright, let's grab the laptop and see if we can finish this up. Alright guys, uh, I got everything uh, hooked up here uh, to the laptop. I uh, got my power cab uh, plugged into the PCP panel with the flat cord like I said. The toggle switch is thrown to program mode. Uh, you'll have to take my word on it. I'm not going to go show it. I happen to have the, my Bachman SD40-2 sitting down here in the train room. Actually, it's the only one I have down here, so I just grabbed it. Uh, just to show you, uh, it's program 3411. Just going to show you, see. It's on the program track, and it's set for program. Uh, so let's open up uh, JMRI here, just to test this out quick. This laptop hasn't been on for a long time, so it's. I think it's going through a lot of updates and things, so it's a little bit uh, slow right now. Okay, there we go. I'm not sure if you guys can see this in the camera. Um, let's go to New Loco. Uh, this has a NCE Bach DSL decoder in it. NC North Coast Engineering. Uh, let's see, where is it? Silent Drive. Nope. Uh, silent Running with Torque Compensation. There it is. Bach DSL. That's the decoder that's in it. And uh, hurry up and how about a read all sheets just to. Uh, bring everything into here uh, it's going through right now reading CVs uh, I see the locomotive jumping around over there as it's uh, pulling information from the uh, decoder 
I don't know if you guys can see that on the, the video or not, but it's over there making little jumps. <clears throat> As it's uh, reading things. Alright, it's done reading. Now let's uh, check some of these. It's not a sound decoder, so sound and sound levels isn't highlighted on here. Um, basic uh, address 3411. That's exactly what it is. Got everything there. Motor shows torque rate kick uh, at 2, torque kick strength 50. Uh, some of this stuff I set already way back when. So I don't remember what a lot of them are. So it's kind of neat. Uh, no speed table there yet. That'll be next on the uh, the agenda. But uh, there's all the information and and what the CVs are set at currently on the uh, on the decoder. All right. So it looks like everything's working. Uh, I'm not going to go through any programming right now. Uh, this video is probably long already. All right, that's it. Uh, program track is wired up and uh, ready to go. And it seems to be functioning as it should. If I uh, have any problems or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to ask me, like I said. And uh, if I have uh, any information to share again, I'll be sure to share that. Um, but that's it for this video. And uh, I... It's hard for me to explain that toggle switch wiring and everything, so please check out the link that I have in the description for, for the Model Railroad Hobbyist uh, article on wiring up four-pole double-throw switches. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to jabber anymore. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, your continued support and uh, stopping by and, and checking out my channel and watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. Um, so I will catch you then on the next video. Take care, guys.